What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 13 beta 2 this whole week ever since it was released on Monday and I wanted to share my experience with you guys when it comes to performance, battery life, and I also wanted to discuss some additional new features and changes found here in beta 2. Now in my original beta 2 what's new video that I uploaded on Monday, I said that I would load up beta 2 on my daily driver which is my 10s Max which was my 10s Max at the time but I decided not to and that was mainly due to battery life issues, performance issues, and things like that that were experienced in beta one of iOS 13. So instead, I just started using my iPhone 10R as my daily driver this whole week. So anyways, let's go over some of these additional new features and changes here in iOS 13. And then we're going to discuss battery life performance, the community poll that I did here on YouTube and more. So I did cover most of the changes and features in beta two in my original video on Monday. But of course, there are some that I discovered later on in the week. So let's go over those. And the first new change is inside of the messages application. And when you click on the search bar up here, you'll notice that you have some new features right here. So we actually have some contacts at the very top. So I guess these are just frequent contacts, people that you've talked to recently. We also have a tab here for links and you can see it's a video actually playing inside of that. And then we have photos down here as well. And if you compare this to iOS 12, iOS 12 had none of this. It was basically just the search bar you searched and that was it. And speaking of search, I also noticed that searching text messages in iOS 13 actually works a lot better than it did in iOS 12 and any other previous version of iOS. You guys know the struggle of trying to search for a message and you just can't find it even though you know it was said. Now I found that in iOS 13, it actually works a lot better. And this is really hard to give an example of, you just have to test it out on your device, but take it from me, searching messages is much better in iOS 13 than it was in iOS 12. So I use the bedtime application every day to kind of help me you know, keep track of time when I need to be going to bed, when I need to be waking up. It's a really good reminder just to have, even if you already know it's good to have. But anyways, a lot of times I don't really like hearing the loud alarm sound in the morning because a lot of times I actually wake up before the wake up time here. So now in iOS 13, if we go over to alarm, you can see we can actually turn that alarm off. So if we turn that off, we will no longer hear that loud alarm in the morning, but the bedtime feature will still be on. So that is a nice feature and that was not in iOS 12. You would not see your bedtime alarm right there inside of the alarm section. So now in iOS 13, when you delete an application where you have a current active subscription, Apple will actually remind you when you go to delete the application, it's gonna ask you, do you want to keep your subscription for this application? So this is a really cool feature because I'm sure a lot of people out there have been billed for a subscription that they just completely forgot about since they deleted the application. So now in iOS 13, you can see there's a manage subscription button right there. It will take you there and you can cancel your subscription. So this is a really great feature that Apple added in to help a lot of people if they maybe forgot that they had an active subscription. So you guys know how we have the swipe keyboard inside of iOS 13. I'm just randomly typing things. But did you know that if we backspace after swiping, it will actually delete that whole word. So it's only gonna work for that one word after you do it, just backspace and you can see it deletes that whole word. Now, if you don't like this, you can actually go into settings and change it. There's actually an option in there. So if you go to our settings, go to general keyboard, and you can see right there, we have delete undoes slide. You could turn that on or off. So now when we activate voice control, you'll see that we do have a brand new icon up here in the top right, and it does also change blue. You can see there it goes from gray to blue. It also turns red when you record certain commands. So now in iOS 13 beta two, it shows my networks instead of known networks like it did in beta one, just a very small change there in the verbiage. And if we go to our iCloud settings here inside of settings, you'll notice that we have a subscriptions tab right there. So we can actually manage our subscriptions and it's not buried super deep inside of our iCloud settings, which is nice. Again, it seems like Apple is really trying to help prevent people from accidentally you know, keeping a subscription alive and things like that. And I'm all the way here for that because that is a big issue and it's good they're not just trying to take money from people. If we go into the app store, you'll notice how we now have a badge on our icon there in the top right. And that indicates that we do have updates available for certain applications. And then if you scroll down, you'll see we have the updated recently right there where it shows your recently updated applications. So if we wanted to share a website inside of Safari, we actually now have more options for doing so. If we go ahead and tap on the share sheet here on a website in Safari, you can see up at the very top there, we have options. If we go ahead and tap on that, you can see we can send as automatic, PDF or web archive. So it's really nice that we have the flexibility of sending something as a web archive file instead of just the PDF. Now also in the share sheet, if we go down to the very bottom, 
bottom, you can see we have manage. And the only difference here from beta one is that it used to say more instead of manage. And if we click on that, you can see we have a few other settings in there. So now inside of the files application, if we long press or haptic press on a file in here, you can see we have these options right here. And this is much better than iOS 12's way of showing all these options. It just had that little black bar there and it's hard to scroll over. Much better way of seeing all the actions here inside of the files application. We do also have some additional Memoji stickers down here. You can see there's a few new ones that were not included in beta one. And I'm sure we're gonna be getting more of those as the betas go on as well. And also when you react to a message inside of the messages application, there is a new sound for every single one of the actions here. So it's very subtle and you probably won't notice it. Most people won't notice it, but the sounds have changed slightly from iOS 12. And if we go into our settings and go to emergency SOS, down at the very bottom, you can see we can actually turn off the loud countdown sound if we want to. And then finally, we did get some new splash screens for like the maps application. We got for HomePod, the TV application, voice memos, health, just a lot of new splash screens for applications. So yeah, those are just some of the additional features in iOS 13 that I missed previously. So anyways, let's move on to the important part of this video, and that is the performance and the battery life and if you should update or not. So first of all, let me just say that performance on iOS 13 beta 2 is excellent when it comes to speed. It's definitely faster than iOS 12. The animations are faster. Haptic touch feels a little bit faster than it did on beta 1. App launching is definitely faster. Even things like pulling down the control center and the notifications seem a lot more fluid and faster than they did in iOS 12. Now going from beta 1 to beta 2, there is also a noticeable difference. Everything just feels a lot smoother on beta 2 than it did on beta 1. Beta 1 was just kind of choppy, I guess would be the right word to describe it. Now, of course, there are bugs in iOS 13 beta 2 still. I did notice that beta 2, like I said, is much more stable and less buggy than beta 1, but I do still get some annoying bugs with things like the keyboard. The keyboard will act up. I even mentioned that in my iPhone SE video yesterday. And I like to take pictures of some of these bugs. You'll see I actually got this earlier today. I had this really weird black bar at the bottom of my maps application. So you can see this was taken on my iPhone 10R. It's supposed to take up the whole screen. But for some reason, I got this big black bar here at the bottom. It was really annoying and I had to close out of the application and open it back up for it to go away. I took this video recording a couple days ago right here. You can see this random white application just showed up on my springboard after installing an application and you can see it's nothing there. I mean, I could delete it, but it's nothing. When I press on it, it's nothing. The application I installed was AutoTrader, so it's not the application I tried to install. It's just a random other app for some reason that showed up on my springboard. So that's another really weird random bug and it actually disappeared. The application there, the blank application actually disappeared like two days later without a reboot or anything. So a really strange bug there. And then obviously there are app compatibility issues. Things like Twitch are really buggy eBay crashes a lot. A lot of applications are still, you know, not optimized for iOS 13. So that's kind of expected. And like I mentioned, I did make a video on the iPhone SE here. Performance is great on the iPhone SE. iPad OS 13 beta 2 is also running fantastic on my iPad right here. If you guys want me to make a dedicated video on that, let me know down in the comment section, but it's running fantastic, super fast, super fluid, and definitely not as many bugs as beta 1, even though beta 1 was actually pretty good for me on the iPad, unlike on the iPhone. So yeah, there are plenty of bugs on iOS 13 beta 2 still, but honestly, none of them have really been detrimental to my productivity. And that's the big reason why I could definitely recommend the second beta to be used on a daily driver device. I've been using this as my daily driver, again, all week long, have not really had any major issues. But if you do want to play it safe, wait for the public beta. That should be out very soon. I will make a video on that. Uh, but again, beta two is surprisingly really solid. So now let's talk about battery life. So you can see here, my iPhone 10R is currently sitting on 17%. And that's after not charging it all day long today. So right now, you can see the the time is 9 16 p.m. and I've been using this phone a lot so if I go to my settings and go to battery you can see just how much I've been using my phone today over seven hours of screen on time and take a look at that I have not charged it all day you can see by the graph right there so battery life is actually fantastic here on iOS 13 beta 2 and I never thought I would say that about such an early beta I mean beta 1 was not that great so that makes it even more surprising that beta 2 is so good here on the iPhone 10R. And this is not just an anomaly either. I'm constantly getting around seven to eight hours of on-screen time and going to bed with around 15, 10 to 15% of battery remaining. Now, I'm not gonna jump the gun and say that battery life is better than iOS 12 just yet, but the fact that I even have to have this conversation and this comparison should tell you that the battery life is pretty good here on iOS 13 beta 2. And it's also been pretty good for my iPad Pro and my iPhone SE.
SE as well. So it seems like battery life across the board is definitely getting better with beta two here. And to prove that it's not just me, if we go to the community tab here on my channel, you can see I did post a poll yesterday saying, how has iOS 13 beta two been for you? And you can see here, most people actually said great. 46% of people said great. I would use it on my daily driver. 26% said good, but a few bugs. Only 14% said it's okay, a few bugs and decent battery life. And then 14% said not good, bad battery life, bad performance. And that was with 11,000 votes. So thank you to everybody who voted in this poll. It's actually really useful to see this, but that just shows that a lot of people are actually having great performance with beta two here. And it's actually really surprising. I did not think that number would be as high as 46%. That's extremely high. And there are also 400 comments in here as well. A lot of people talking about a lot of different bugs and how it's running on their device. I'm not gonna read them in this video, maybe in a future video, just because this one's already so long, but you can go over to the community tab here on my channel and read all these if you want to. So yeah, it's pretty awesome to see that iOS 13 beta two is running so good for so many different people. Now there is one gripe I have about iOS 13 beta two, and this actually just happened today. So you can see up there, you may have noticed this whole time I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm on LTE and that's not because I don't have Wi-Fi. That's because this is an issue here in iOS 13 beta 2. For some reason, I cannot connect to my Wi-Fi, even though all my other phones, including phones and iPads on iOS 13 are currently connected to that network. So you can see when I try to join my network right here, it's just going to fail. And earlier it actually said I had the wrong passcode for some reason. It said the passcode was wrong and even my Mac picked it up and said, do you wanna share your passcode with your iPhone? And I said yes, and it still failed. So you can see there it says incorrect password, even though I know it is the correct passcode. And I've tried rebooting my device, that didn't help. So I may just have to do a reset network settings or something like that. Again, it works on all my other devices, so it's weird that this is happening here on my 10R. But aside from that, connectivity has been fine, especially LTE. LTE has been perfectly fine here on my iPhone 10R. I make phone calls every single day, send text messages every single day, never had an issue. So yeah, beta two is actually a very solid beta release, and I definitely wouldn't even try to steer you away from using it on your daily driver. I've had plenty of time with iOS 13 beta two, using it all day, every day, in the house, outside of the house, and things have worked out just fine. So that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna pass the question along to you. How has iOS 13 beta two been for you? Let me know down in the comment below. And of course, make sure you guys like this video. These videos do take a long time to shoot and a long time to edit and just prepare. And I can really only tell if you guys like it from the comments and the like button. So definitely go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment if you do enjoy these in-depth type videos. I'm trying to be the most in-depth here on YouTube. And of course, if you guys wanna know everything there is to know about iOS 13, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I will be covering everything in-depth here on the channel. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.